Hey guys, Ryan here. Have you ever heard that things tend to happen in threes? It feels like in the last few months we've had one surprise after another in Power Rangers news. First from Bandai withdrawing as the toy license partner and Hasbro coming in, then Toys R Us closing down pretty much everywhere, and now Saban leaving the franchise and selling it entirely to Hasbro. It seems like all the stuff that we kind of have taken for granted and expected to be there are all up in the air again. Quite soon, Power Rangers is going to look very different. That is reminding me that there have been quite a few products over the years that I didn't buy and I kind of regret not buying. So today I'm just going to be talking about my top 5 Power Ranger regrets. As in, things I didn't buy and should have. Number 5, the Silver Morpher from Power Rangers Super Mega Force. Okay, so during pretty much the entire Neo Saban era, the six Ranger Morphers have been pretty terrible. They're nothing like the rest of the team's default Morpher or Deluxe equivalent. They've always been sold as part of the lower scale of roleplay gear, but they were just never something I was interested in. Super Mega Force mixed it up a bit because it was the only way to get the normal Silver Ranger key. But I think something that had stuck in my mind during that time was Bruno's review where he called it out and said what a rubbish thing it was. People were selling them for ridiculous prices on eBay, and it literally had one button. All it was was a keypad where all the numbers had been stuck together as one giant button. It was a truly terrible toy. The only thing it had going for it was obviously the aforementioned Silver Ranger key being included, but also it bore quite a decent resemblance to the Japanese version. Eventually I would go on to buy the Korean version of the uh, Silver Ranger Morpher or the Gokai Cellular as it was called in Gokaija. But I always remember seeing the Silver Morpher just once in a UK toy shop and not buying it because I thought, yeah, we'll see if it goes on sale. It never did go on sale and people snapped them up and sold them for ridiculous amounts of money on eBay. I've still never seen it at a price that I thought was worth paying. And I'm kind of annoyed by this, because to this day I still don't have a silver Super Mega Force key. Yes, sure, I've got the whole Go Kaija team in keys, but I'm totally missing it for Super Mega Force, and it's always felt like something that I need to get one day. When that will be, no clue. So yeah, Silver Morpher, terrible toy, terrible functionality, annoyingly need it for completion's sake. That's how they get us. Oh, Bandai. At number 4, the Turbo Garage from Power Rangers Turbo. So in the first 10 years, Power Rangers didn't really do playsets. Eventually they did the Power Chamber as a kind of stand-in for the Command Center. That was it though, in the first 3 years, one playset. Nothing in Season 4 for Zeo, then Season 5 Turbo, kind of a playset, but this time for your Zords? I remember seeing this in Toys R Us for about £40, I think. I was over the show then and wasn't buying the Zords, but I remember seeing it and thinking, that's quite unique. It kind of looked like a toy that you could do without. All it was was a place to store the turbo cars and Artillatron and the Rescue Megazord kind of stood beside it. Very weird. But I did like that it was a little bit screen accurate, like it looked like that shot of the garage that you saw at the start of the turbo theme. In recent years, I've seen it on eBay, but it never seems to go for cheap enough for me to want to purchase. It also had the novelty of having the, is it Larago figure? The only way to get that. If you're into like weird troll things, then this was the perfect set for you. Other than Japan's Time Ranger provider space, which I actually do have now, I can't remember another occasion where there's been a playset for Zords to kind of dock into. The Turbo Garage, really was that. Yeah, I can't think of another season that's had a Zord dock that wasn't an actual part of the Megazord line. Turbo Garage is weird because it's a toy I didn't want at the time, but as time has gone on, it's become more of an outlier and that's made me want it more. At number three, Power Rangers Ninja Storm. Pretty much everything. Ninja Storm was the first season to appear in Disney Store and that kind of gave it a lot more credence and credibility. I, I wanted to buy toys from the show again. I didn't, I came very close many times. Those Ninja Flash figures with the weapons, the sidearms and the gliders, I just wanted them, they all matched. Their weapons combined and were 
pretty much fully painted. It was, in my opinion at the time, the perfect set of figures. When I eventually went on to buy them off eBay years later and I found out how limited the arm movement was, I kind of rescinded that thought. But still, a very good set and to date, still the only set where you can get all the Ninja Storm figures in the same scale and with the accessories you kind of want to be there. Unless of course Bandai massively surprise us in the next few months and finally give us the other half of that Ninja Storm Legacy set, but unfortunately I'm not really counting on it anymore. Then you had the Zords. The Zords in Ninja Storm I just loved. I thought they were all incredible. The way that every ranger has one Zord, but somehow you still get loads of combinations and a massive Ultra Zord. I would not seen it done before, I don't really think I've seen it done since. Yeah, I really wanted those Zords. As I said, years later I went on eBay and I bought them second hand. So I ended up paying basically the same price as I would have got them for in the Disney store those days, and I didn't even get the boxes with them, so... Moral of the story, if you see something on the shelf and you really think you want it, just buy it. At number two, the Lightspeed figures from Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue. Lightspeed figures then, now this was back in the day where six rangers having weapons that combined into one blaster was very appealing. I'd never seen it done before, and also spurred on by the fact that the Titanium Ranger was a Power Rangers exclusive, it was made for the show, it didn't appear in GoGo 5. The fact that they'd managed to give him a weapon and sort of tie that in with the Rescue Bird idea from the show just made me want that set of figures over the talking ones. You know, the ones where the guy figures talked and the weapons of the girls figures talked. It was a weird year because you had the Lightspeed figures and the Rescue figures, and weirdly in the UK we got the Rescue figures first, and those were the ones I ended up getting. Now I don't know if you've seen them, but they're not great, they are weird figures. Like the proportions, wow. They're also quite unique in that the girl figures are taller than the guy figures. They also have their weapon dock things kind of moulded into their hands, so they're stuck there at all times. Understandably then, as the years have gone on, I've wanted those light speed figures that I didn't buy more than the rescue figures I did get. For most of last year I was tracking it on eBay and eventually agreed a price on the Mega Collection 6 pack with a seller. Now we never got these whole collection sets in the UK, which is a shame because they are a brilliant way of doing them. Rather than having six figures on card that can never really go back on, you get this blister mould inside a box that you can put back together again when you're done. The accessories you get with those figures are also quite impressive, like how the Titanium Ranger gets his Morpher and also his signature weapon, which has a bit of a hinge to it so you can twist it from Blaster into its axe mode. I like that they gave each Ranger their sidearms, they also gave them a slightly enlarged version of the Rescue Bird weapons from the show, which were a lot more screen accurate than the ones that they invented for the Rescue figures. So yes, that's another example of one where years later I've wanted them so bad I've gone back and bought them from someone else. And top of the list of my Power Ranger regrets that I never bought, number one, Alien Ranger figures and Battle Borgs from Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers. So Alien Ranger toys were this weird anomaly. They just kind of appeared and as soon as that, they were gone again. And that was kind of how Saban and Bandai probably wanted us to see the series. It was the rebound from Mighty Morphin. It, it was designed to get you ready for the idea that the Power Rangers were going to change every single year now. I only ever saw the toys for Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers once or twice, both times in Woolworths, which is a now closed down store we used to have that kind of sold everything, a bit like Target. They weren't in the Power Rangers toy section, they weren't even on the end of the aisle. I think they were part of a weird stick-on plastic tab thing, so they didn't even have a proper place as toys, never mind as a show. The figures had just sort of been ported over from Japan, from the Kaku Ranger toy line, within a just they've just changed the packaging. These were the kinds of figures I really didn't like. They were just like the four inch style where the ones that would have rode the motorcycles in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers toy line before we got the Automorphin flip heads. Yep, sure they got a lot of gold plastic weapons, but eh, so what? They were actually smaller than the Automorphins and even back then I didn't like the idea of them being side by side and looking so jarringly different. Perhaps if they'd released straight up Automorphins, I might have gone for them. Then you had the Battle Borgs, which we were told were Zords, but they were Zords unlike any others. They didn't combine, and they were kind of 60-70% of the way there to Shogun Zords, which actually did become a Megazord. So I was like, I'll just get that one. The Alien Ranger toy line was a very short, very strange anomaly, and yet as the years have gone by, I've kind of wanted them a lot more. Maybe it's because their aftermarket value has held so rigorously on eBay. 
Possibly it's because other than a few Ranger keys and a solitary 5-inch action hero, Bandai never ventured back into that series in 22 years. And possibly because for the franchise it represented such a sharp right turn away from the Mighty Morphin that we'd known and into a brand new version of the show that could change all the time. So that's my list of top 5 Power Ranger regrets, things I never bought. Really interested to hear from you guys now, what about you? What did you miss that you now wish you hadn't? Or that maybe you've got your hands on via the aftermarket and maybe paid a little too much for, don't worry, we've all done it. If you want to be here for the next one, why not hit the subscribe button? And are you following me on Instagram at Power Ranger Gram? You should. Until the next time though, see you later.